There was a time that our colonies were ruled by the king or queen of England. We wanted to decide how this land was governed. We wanted to make our own decisions. We did not agree with tyranny. We wanted our own rules and our own laws. We dreamed of a government that was run by the everyday person. There was a revolution, a war for freedom and liberty. King George and his lobsterback soldiers lost that war. Every able-bodied man in Machias was ready to fight. In 1769, the Machias Bay Colony had grown considerably. We formed our own militia. We also had a Machias Committee of Safety, which defended our area. Most every town up and down the coast had their own Committee of Safety. We had a hundred good men that served under Captain Stephen Jones, Lieutenant Benjamin Foster, who was later promoted to Colonel, and Ensign Sylvanus Scott. Back then, before the Revolutionary War, our local militia was used to defend Machias from anyone who might want to invade us. Our militia was officially approved by Massachusetts Lieutenant Governor Thomas Hutchinson on August 7th, 1769. It was a few years before we organized to fight against the British. We had a strong militia and we were getting organized, but Machias was not an officially recognized township. Since Nova Scotia kept ignoring our request to become an official township, we decided to write to Massachusetts and ask them if we could finally become a town so that we could have a school and a minister. 80 of our men signed the request to become a town. Massachusetts finally granted our request and we became Machias Township in 1770. We became the first town to be incorporated between the Penobscot River and the St. Croix River. There were rules. In order for our town to be official, we had to agree to six new conditions. Number one, within six years, we had to have 80 good Protestant families in Machias. Number two, we had to build 80 houses, none less than 18 feet square, and all had to have at least seven foot walls. Number three, we had to clear and cultivate five acres of land on which each share that is fit for tilling and mowing. Number four, build a suitable meeting house for public worship of God with a learned Protestant minister who has housing and salary. Number five, each proprietor is required to give a bond of 50 pounds to the treasurer of the province. Number six, we had to agree not to cut any of the king's pine on or around Machias Township. All of the pine trees of the diameter of 21 inches at 12 inches above the ground are reserved for ship's mass for the Royal Navy. A 100 pound fine will be imposed for each tree cut without a license from the king's surveyor. So you see, we were still under the king's rules when Machias became an official township. We did not like it but we had no other choice at the time. We worked hard on this list of demands from Massachusetts. A few people even wondered if we might have been better off not becoming a town. It took a lot of work, but most of us felt that it was important. Some even joked that we might become the 14th colony. Jaffet Hill, 
Isaiah Foster and Samuel Scott began laying out the property lots and a few roads right here in town. In the seven years since we first settled Machias, we had grown from an association of just 16 men to a town over 80 men and their families. In July of 1771, the town of Machias voted to hire our first minister. We raised 20 shillings on each lot owner in town and raised 84 pounds for the minister's salary. Stephen Jones went to Boston and met Reverend James Lyon, who had been a minister in Nova Scotia. Reverend Lyon came to Machias and accepted the pulpit full-time. In June and July of 1773, Daniel Merritt of Pleasant River was employed as a surveyor to establish the courses and boundaries of all of the marshland in the township Machias. Daniel Merritt wrote, there is 572 acres of high marsh and thatch lands. There is 181 acres of thatch in all. Subtract this leaves 391 acres of marsh divided into 84 shares, which gives four acres and 55 square rods of high marsh per share. The thatch land divided into 84 shares gives two acres and 13 square rods per share. He noted that lot 19 is a very large lot, but very bad and is large for that reason. He also noted that lot 44 is near the brick kiln and on Potato Point side of the river. The marshland was very important for grazing livestock and hay for winter feed. In 1774, the first meeting house was built on a hill overlooking West River, just above Middle River. It had no pews. Instead, it had wooden planks from the mill set on wooden blocks for legs. The meeting house was 25 feet by 42 feet with seven foot walls. It cost 65 pounds and eight shillings or 317 American dollars. The meeting house was a place for town meetings as well as church services.